Good afternoon to everyone, and thanks for the invi invitation. Uh, we have heard several presentations on medieval buildings, and I'm going to speak a bit of the people who actually built these buildings, or to be more precise, people uh, or craftsmen who made the bricks for masonry buildings. Uh, and, well, actually, this is more a plead for help than an yes. <laughs> actual paper because I have been quite unable to find any research on this subject. So if you have encountered uh, these brickmakers' marks or uh, know of any research done with them, I would be more than grateful for your help. Uh, but I think this is rather fascinating subject which uh, I encountered while doing excavations in medieval Turku in Finland. Uh, and in one site I was working at, I found these uh, marks in uh, an urban townhouse, whereas earlier these had been documented only in public buildings like churches and castles. <coughs> but before going deeper into the subject of these marks themselves, uh, I think it's in place to give a small glimpse of the chronological and geographical area we are working while speaking of medieval Finland. Uh, it's somewhat anachronistic to speak of medieval Finland as it did not exist as an individual power by itself. Uh, in fact, it was part of the Kingdom of Sweden. Uh, I believe most of you know where Sweden is situated and Finland is uh, in between Sweden and Russia. Uh, as you can see from this map, which shows the towns and uh, crown castles uh, of 15th century Finland, it was rather a peripheric area with only six towns. Uh, and Turku was the oldest and most important of them. Um, and uh, as Robin pointed out earlier uh, in the earlier session, uh, the medieval period in Scandinavia and Finland is considered to be somewhat later than and elsewhere in Europe. Uh, so we are speaking of, of the period around or between years 1200 and early 1600, uh, 1600th century. Uh, and to the subject of the bricks themselves, um, after, of course the prerequisites uh, for making these brick makers marks, we need bricks. And they were brought in Finland in, during the 13th century. And it's thought that they were brought by the Dominican order, which was a huge factor in this early medieval Finland in, in Scandinavian terms. Uh, and these first bricks are documented from uh, sites like the Bishop Sea at uh, Koroinen in Turku. Uh, and it, it was not until the beginning of the 15th century that bricks were started to be used, it used in urban context. Uh, it's only in 1390 that uh, masonry stone houses began to be built first in Turku and it was only in the 15th century that mas masonry churches started to be built uh, in, in the area of Finland. Before that they were always made of wood. Here are some examples of buildings where you, where you can find medieval brickwork and medieval brickmakers' marks. Uh, up there is Hamek Castle, then there is Turku Castle, and to the uh, left or right there's Turku Cathedral. And this Turku Cathedral is the place where you can most prominently see these brickmakers' marks. And Considering how late brick making as technolog technology came to Finland, uh, it seems quite logical that this uh, kind of marking system emerged only in a relatively late phase in, in the 15th century. And that's what they look like. Well, you don't see much. <laughs> um, is there a pointer here? 
Which one? Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a pentagram up there, and there's a key symbol down there. Uh, and these symbols can roughly be divided into four different groups, although they are somewhat overlapping. There are depictions of actual items. There are letters, which is a very small group. Uh, there are apotropaic, or you could think that they are apotropaic symbols, uh, and uh, marks that I tend to call actual house marks because those are the marks that a peasant would use to sign his property. And this is what they look like. Uh, here are samples of all the four different groups. And as you can see, uh, those sewing actual household items uh, are, are the most common group. Uh, and what items are present? There are at least keys and axes, and uh, <coughs> that one down there, I think it's a grit iron used for cooking meats or grilling meats. Then there are uh, letters N and P, there's pentagram and a cross, and then uh, a, an actual house, house mark from uh, Castleholm Castle. But why so many household items? I think this is where we are encountering the uh, physical and mental world where these brickmakers uh, were working in. And Finland in, in the medieval period was part of Catholic Europe, which means that saints held a prominent place in the everyday life and uh, beliefs of, of Finnish persons. And now the interesting thing is uh, that as well as being ordinary household items that uh, people met every day, all these items present are also attributes of saints. Uh, for example, St. Peter's attribute is, is a key, St. Olaf's attribute is an axe, St. An Andrew uh, holds his, his cross, and St. Lawrence holds this gridiron. And I think this is rather fascinating connection. Why? Why would you pick symbols of saints? Uh, and I think what we are seeing here are not just random symbols or even just uh, symbols of the saints, but this could actually be signatures, the actual names of these brickmakers. Because the uh, saints and their attributes were so familiar with every medieval person uh, that when seeing a key, he would instantly think of St. Peter. When seeing an axe, he would in instantly think of St. Olaf. And uh, when seeing these symbols in bricks, it would work the same way. They would think that, oh, that brick was made by Peter. Oh, that was made by Olaf. So it does make some sense that these illiterate people could have written their names in bricks. And this takes us uh, to the question of the ethnicity of these brickmakers. There has been some discussion whether they were uh, of German ori origin from, from Livonia or from northern Germany or whether they were uh, from Sweden or uh, even from Finland. And we have no help to solve this in historical sources, written sources, because almost no brickmakers are mentioned in the uh, about 6,000 uh, medieval documents that survive from the area of Finland. Uh, we know that the master masons, or at least some of them, came from the area of Livonia and northern Germany, but I don't think that they would always take their own workforce with them. Uh, at least in, in the 15th century, we know that uh, local peasants uh, took part in the production of bricks in, in the area of Finland. Uh, and it would make sense that they ha 
by that time, by the mid or late 15th century, they had, had already created their own system of marking these bricks. Because at the same time, in, in German area, they used stamps to mark the bricks, which um, didn't take place in, in the area of Finland, nor in the area of Sweden, uh, as I know, uh, in, this, in, in the medieval period. So my guess <laughs> would be that these symbols uh, are actually marks used by more or less local uh, workforce. Which again is rather interesting because, as I told you, we don't know this person from any written sources. And if uh, these symbols I just uh, showed you uh, would actually convey their names, we have a great list of workmen that are otherwise lost to history. Uh, there's one more thing to this subject, because it seems very likely that, that every single different brickmaker's mark uh, was highly personal. You didn't pass it to your successor, or brothers didn't use the same symbol. We could actually follow individual craftsmen uh, through their work, Sup supposing that we would document all these marks. Uh, this area here uh, is the area around Turku. Turku is there in the middle, so uh, this is in the, the southwest Finland, at the coast of the Baltic Sea. And I, I'll take this uh, key symbol as an example, partly because it's also we have a key in the uh, Merck logo. <laughs> uh, and let's see, we know at least five sites uh, that this particular, particular uh, mark can be found. Four of them are churches and one uh, is uh, an urban townhouse with no ecclesiastical connection. Although I think this is just a small sample of this sign and uh, the mark could be found elsewhere as well, uh, I think what this gives us uh, is a reason to believe that this brickmaker worked in a rather limited area uh, around the town of Turku, which, which does make perfect sense because in the late 15th century this area uh, was a central point of uh, different building projects. It was in this period that the uh, bishop of Turku ordered several stone, uh, stone churches to be built in neighboring parishes. And this was also the most vivid area of urban town building. So any brickmaker would have had a flourishing business in, in this area. And this is just one example. Uh, I think if we could document all these marks, uh, we could find different patterns and different uh, workmen and follow, follow them. And it would also give, give us a relative way of dating these buildings. We, ha we know the date, pre quite precise dates of some buildings like uh, Turku Cathedral. And uh, we could presume that a craftsman would do his work for, let's say, Thirty maximum 40 years. So that gives us a certain time span when encountering these signs. Um, well, to conclude, uh, I believe that these truly are personal signs. Uh, it seems that they were uh, made to sign the production so that you would make a supply of bricks and mark just one brick in, in that sample. Uh, and I, I do also believe that further research on this matter uh, could reveal us facts of medieval history that have been hitherto uh, forgotten for four centuries. <laughs>